Three, two, one. All right, guys. Welcome back to the Monica S. Martinez Live. I'm sorry for any inconvenience. Um, I was having like a major meltdown in here in the kitchen. Like, the hell with this. I don't want to do this anymore because YouTube gives me problems. V Live gives me problems. This is just straight bullshit. But um, <laughs> anyway. Welcome, Jess. I'm glad that you're able to join us. So Absolutely, Monica. Like, Yay, it's working. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so thanks again for you know being our guest. We we've experienced so much trouble with um Google Hangouts, and uh -huh. you know now we're back on this, and then this was giving me a problem, and. Now we're back. Okay, I feel I feel a little better. I feel a little relieved. <laughs> Good. So, <laughs> really quick, let me let me just um <coughs> remind. I'm cooking, by the way. So <laughs> they get to see me in real form. I'm like in um, gym attire and stuff like that because I rushed home to do all this wonderful stuff. But I just want to just hey everyone. Hi Sylvia. Hi Candace. Um, I just want to say really quick, Jess, um, let me just remind the folks where they can go um, to get their products and all of that real quick. Um, TantalizingProductions.com. Make sure to visit us on MonicaSMartinez.com on any social media site, Monica S. Martinez. Um, I think I'm getting feedback from Facebook, so I better get out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Happens to me right. too. Yeah, this is like, whoa. Okay. So Jess, thank you, yes. thank you, thank you for joining <laughs> us. We appreciate you being here. Oh, thank so, you for having me. I love talking to you. Yeah, you know, it was great the last time, and I just feel like you know it it got like sidetracked because people weren't able to log on because of all the issues we were having. Right. So now that we have you back and we're back in business, and I'm over my little tantrum. Because <laughs> I was having one, I was like, "The hell with this!" Um, I didn't see it, so you you're didn't safe. See it. it was on YouTube, so yeah, it's it's like live on YouTube. I'm like, "This is bullshit! I don't want to do this anymore." <laughs> so, um, just tell if you if you don't mind, can you just tell our audience about you, what you do, where they can <laughs> find you? Absolutely. So I am a dating coach for the LGBT community. Uh, I'm a best-selling author with two uh, dating and relationship books, Seeking Her, Knowing You, and Zero to 90. And I'm also the creator and host of two podcasts that you can find on iTunes. We have Drinks with Jess that's been running for about two years. And that's where we bring the LGBT community together and its allies to share everybody's missions and, and to give them support. And then the other one, of course, that just launched in February is the Dating Pool podcast. So that's geared mostly towards women um, in nacho is biting my foot right now um in the lgbt community and that's been that's been doing pretty well too so yeah i'm all over the place that's excellent so guys in case you didn't hear what she said let me just remind you she is a dating coach for the lgbt community so so you basically like hook people up, right? No, I'm not a matchmaker. And and You're I'm not a certain, matchmaker? No, I'm not a matchmaker. People can no. do that on their own. But m my job is to allow people to see the real them and experience their own confidence because many times that's, you know, in our community we're we're used to, you know, the U-Haul jokes and jumping into relationships and and moving too fast sometimes and uh, you know, when you when you have that that kind of setup, and I've been there too. I was there twenty years ago. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it, there there is definitely um, a need for people to really see how wonderful they are, and how to choose and take control of of their dating life. You know, who they're going to allow into their space because many times we don't. We get we get love bomb. We get crazy. And we lose that logical side of our mind. So once that happens, then then I have to kind of step in and, and be the coach and hold their hand and, you know, uh, allow them to learn how to make the good choices for them. Because we all want love. We all want a good relationship. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we just get a little clouded. And I mean, I know I have a great group of friends, but they're always going to have my back rather than giving me the logic that I need. So this way I, I can be a non-biased participant 
and allowing them to to build that confidence and make those choices to help them seek love. So then when they're ready for a matchmaker, they'll find one. But I'm not a matchmaker. Okay, so you're like the pre-workout. Yes, I, I am pre-season. Okay, I get it. I get yes. it. So, all right, so you're the confidence booster, like, hey, mm -hmm. you're beautiful, you're worthy, that kind oh, of stuff, absolutely. Right? But yeah, absolutely. But it's a, I mean, it takes a lot of work. When I work with my clients, I mean, it, the work is on them. And I don't necessarily work with everybody. It has to be somebody who's very committed to wanting to transform themselves and, and see the best parts of themselves because we all have them. And sometimes, you know, people get jaded over the years through relationships and, and you really have to allow them to, to see how, how much they actually bring to the table rather than just worrying about somebody else liking them. Now it's in their hands where they could say, well, now it's my choice. Do I like that person or not? So it kind of flips the switch, but it is, it, it, when you go through dating coaching, it's a huge transformation and everything that I've done, I've had to do myself. And I still practice all those, all those aspects today. Yeah. Well, my understanding is that the dating world sucks today. No, I is love dating. True? I do. No. I love dating. You know, I, it, again, like that's dating supposed to be fun and exciting and, and, um, different and mysterious. And I love that. I love that excitement. You know, sometimes people get into relationships and they, they become a little bored. I remember the last time I was on, we talked about the, um, dead bed syndrome or actually when you were on my show, yes, we talked, we about, talked the, about the dead bed. dead bed. Right. But when you're in the, the dating frame of mind, you don't get that monotony until you allow that to happen. So I don't know. I think dating's exciting. I think well, it's great Sylvia, to connect with Sylvia new people. Sylvia disagrees. Sylvia <laughs> agrees with me that the dating scene sucks. Yeah. She says it does. It really does. So, um, but you know, maybe you could work with Sylvia. I mean, do you work with straight women as well for like I, straight I do. relationships as well? Absolutely. I, I work with straight women because really dating and, and relationships start with the person. They start with you because <laughs> you have to be good by yourself. You have to be attracted to yourself. So these are all things that people kind of forget. So I've worked with, um, in fact, I actually have a lot of people that I work with that are straight men because they don't seem to understand women. So mm -hmm. who better to listen to than, than a woman who loves women? <laughs> I mean, it, it kind of makes sense. It does. It really does. Um, hi, hi, Sandra. Um, Oh, she, oh hey, guys, like, by the way. Hi. Yeah, hi. just says hi to you, ladies, too. And I'm sorry, I'm eating my dinner. This is my dinner, guys. What, are, my what is that? Your Shakeology. Well, actually, it really is not a Shakeology. It's just in the Shakeology cup, but it's a green smoothie. I'm, I love oh, that. it's purple now. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm like on the... Oh, Alan says simple dating is the best. I does, love that. Does that make sense? Simple dating? Yeah, simple yeah. dating makes sense. Dating's not supposed to be complicated. Uh, we, it gets but, complicated but is, in our minds. You know? Right, but people, I always say people make it more complicated than it is. Relationships are great, mm -hmm. just people make them complicated. Absolutely, uh, I totally agree with that. Yeah, I mean, I, I get it. I mean, I, I, I like to date my husband. And you should, <laughs> you know, once... Once you enter a relationship, dating doesn't stop. You have to still date that person. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it gets boring. It does. It yeah. definitely does. Um, Sandra, thank you for sharing the video. Sylvia says hi to you, Jess. Hi, Sylvia. So um, let's talk about that dead bed syndrome because since you brought it up, that that's hilarious. Like We, we definitely should touch base on it. You're the tantalizing woman, so you tell me how to avoid it. Well, I, I want to you hear know, your take on it. <laughs> dead bed syndrome is not a good thing, people, okay? Mm -hmm. That means your sex life sucks. Mm -hmm. So that means you need me in your life, right? So you, you <laughs> go visit Jess to get all the confidence to go do the dating. And then when you get to that part, you know, where you're going to actually do the hinky pinky and you get that dead bed syndrome, which it shouldn't <laughs> happen for many years. Can you turn that water off pretty please? This is the kitchen. I am in the kitchen. Yes. <laughs> I, I'm in my kitchen and he, he wants to wash dishes. I should have recorded that. That's the first time you're doing it. <laughs> What's there up, man? 
<laughs> okay. All right. That's I love it. He'll not act, so you know, gotta send him on his way. Um, but yeah, so the dead bed syndrome. We were saying how how soon did that take place when we talked about that? We said a couple of months, right? Yeah, I think um, usually in the in in the lesbian community, apparently, from what reports have said, it could be anywhere from like a year to three years. But like a year should be like honeymoon phase. Like there should be no reason for, and I could tell you, I mean, I went through a relationship where there was dead bed syndrome, not that I wanted it to be, but mm -hmm. there were other aspects involved um, as a, a, because of that. But it's, it's not fun. It's not fun for anybody. No, I mean, dead I better, bed syndrome you know is what? like when I'm, when I'm 80 years old, I better, die in bed, you know, mm -hmm. like that's, that's my thought. Um, because uh, you know, it is a part of a relationship and it is a part of dating. And it's, again, it's supposed to be something fun. And I think after a while people are afraid to express new things that they want to experience. And I'm sure that you have a lot of, um, uh, knowledge about that. Oh, uh, absolutely. I mean, you know, first off, let me, let me just, let, let's just rewind a little bit. Um, Dead bed syndrome. I I never want to experience it ever. I I like want to die having an orgasm. Like seriously. Like Perfect I want to have. To die. That's the best way to die. I want to be like ninety years old having a freaking orgasm that generates a heart attack. Okay. Like that's how I want to die. I mean, <laughs> sex sex is like to me the fountain of the youth. You know. It's you know what? It's the most natural human energy that you can have is Absolutely. your is your sexual energy absolutely and um you know sex, sex does a body good but mm -hmm. um going back to like if it's dead you know how do how do we bring it back together first off it shouldn't die within the first i want to say 10 years like i you know yeah you could spice it up here and there but there should be absolutely no dead silence anywhere or dead bed syndrome right for a good, exactly. like, you know 10 years in a relationship, I think. Um, so yeah, they would come and check me out at Tantalize and Productions. I would then, you know, discuss like what's going on in the bedroom. And then we would talk about certain toys that, you know, you can introduce into the bedroom because intimacy is key, right? Absolutely. Intimacy is key. So, you know, where we start doing the kissing, the touching again and engaging, you know, couples have to engage. So, right. um, boo to dead bed, dead bed syndrome. Boo, Absolutely. Boo. And, and I know you and I had discussed this before, but you know, for, for the guys that are out there watching and even for, for the women who are out there watching, uh, no matter what community you're in, I mean, at least for women, sex starts in the mind and mm -hmm. that can start from the time you wake up. So my, my key is that you never want to fight with who you fuck. Like that's my thing. Because you know you what? Hear that, guys? Don't fight with the person you fuck. <laughs> I, I mean, seriously, I mean, can I say that on camera for Absolutely. you? Why <laughs> okay. Can't you? But Absolutely. but it's true. I mean, you know, if if my partner pisses me off, the last thing I want to do is cuddle up next to her. Like that's just mm -hmm. You know, you better give me like a day. Sometimes give me a week before I even want to look oh, at you. No, at that no, point. No, you know no, what I mean? No, no, the makeup sex has to be good. Oh, yeah, it will be good, but you got to <laughs> let me get over the angriness first. <laughs> but I actually, I really don't get frustrated with people. So for me, I'm, I'm constantly in, in attraction mode. Mm -hmm. um, just in my life in general, I could be, a, a, you know, at work. I could be out with my friends. I could be out by myself. So I'm. I think because I do what I do, I'm constantly in in that animalistic mode mm -hmm. that sex is never a problem for me. No, it's never a problem for me either. I, I mean, I love it personally. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, I think, you know, like you said, um, people have to get comfortable within themselves, right? Mm -hmm. They have to be really confident in themselves in order to want to be engaging into oh, yeah. you know, sexual activities. Because a lot a lot of things happen, I think, for women, right? They, the insecurities. And that's that's what, what you play the role of saying, OK, hey, you're beautiful. You're this, you're Absolutely. that, right? Absolutely. And, and you know, I, I still have to say that, that when you and I had the original discussion, 
And I told mm -hmm. you, I, I tell people to start sleeping naked because it gets mm -hmm. comfortable. And you told me that you don't sleep naked. So I, I, was, I was pretty flabbergasted by that because you are a very confident person, but it, it is amazing. I mean, even, even some of the most beautiful women I've worked with didn't realize how uncomfortable they were with themselves until they started doing that. And then all these things started coming up in them and welling up and all these emotions and all these insecurities. And that's how we got through them to really gain their confidence. So then they were able to start choosing partners who were better for them. That's crazy so. because right, uh, like I told you, I don't, I, I don't sleep naked. Um, I, I don't, I have an issue with it, but not not an issue like bad i just like from a little kid like i feel like bugs are gonna crawl on me so i need, yeah, I, need I, I need clothes but menopause has come and you know she's she's playing this really dirty little game with me <laughs> so i am forced now to take the clothes off in the bed uh -huh. so, it's, it's, um, those, it's those hot flashes just throw yourself in a freezer and call it a day oh my god it is like crazy i wish my mom would have warned me about this stuff but you know so now lately i've been um i've been sleeping naked <laughs> in a sense because yeah. i have to i have to take off my clothes but it's crazy because somewhere in the middle of the night i get cold and i go back and i want to go put these clothes back on mm -hmm. but, but i mean um, you, you look at it from an aspect of you know, in in our society, in our culture, mm -hmm. we are we are just bombarded by body image um, situations, and it, it, nobody's going to look like that. Nobody is airbrushed when they wake up. You know what I mean? And as you get older, things start to drop, things droop, things fold, things do whatever. So. You know, if if you're going to have a healthy sex life for the rest of your life, you better be comfortable with that body. Well, yeah, I mean, if you don't want things drooping, I, I got a great place for people to go, especially <laughs> if you live in the Bronx, you can go to Untamed by Iron. I've been working out over there and, you know, things started lifting, which yeah. is amazing. <laughs> I mean, but that's so, a whole thing like, you know, people people have to, you know, work out or eat healthy. Mm -hmm. But But everything that you do that's a choice that's good for you adds in that confidence and allows you to be more in control of every aspect. And, and when I work with people, it's not just about dating. Every, all that confidence, it flows over into their business life, their mm -hmm. family life, their friend life. I mean, it just, it, once they get that, they start taking control of every aspect. And that's what I love to see. That's why I do what I do. Mm. And we appreciate it. So we have a couple of comments here for you, Jess. Yes. So um, we have, okay, so Santos wrote, um, he says, the only fighting should happen is only when she has her pillow ready should you fight <laughs> in the bedroom. So he's talking about pillow fighting. I love okay. that. I agree. I agree. Um, and then he also wrote naked and put the air conditioning on when you sleep. <laughs> <laughs> so Dilla says that she sleeps naked. I know Dilla she does. <laughs> Hi, Dilla. Sylvia says that actually that's actually what I forced myself to do after my last bad relationship was mm -hmm. to force herself to sleep naked. That's great. Yeah, and then Santos, Santos is very active on this uh, feed. He's like, sex is better naked. Mm -hmm. And then Sylvia said, sleeping naked is the best. Mm -hmm. And then we have Keisha. She said, I agree with you so much because I go through that too. So naked or at least half naked is comfortable for me. Absolutely. That's and sometimes for, for people who don't like it, think about it this way. Think about all the times like in the winter, you know, sometimes it's cold. You got to put something on. But mm -hmm. I remember, uh, you know, I tend to to change position a lot when I sleep. And like I would get circulation cut off like it was just uncomfortable. So like when there's no barriers, there's no barriers. Mm hmm. That's yeah. true. Mm -hmm. That's true. You know, but then, you know, what happens when the, you know, blanket happens to, you know, slide between the legs, you know? And it just makes your sleep more enjoyable, Hanukkah. That's it. <laughs> you hear that, guys? Masturbation is key. <laughs> yes, it is. So, Jess, can you let everyone know where they can reach you if they want to reach out to you and talk to you and have them 
work with you, like for you to boost their confidence and to tell them how beautiful they are? Absolutely. I, I love that. Yeah. Um, everybody can reach me at dwjphl.com. Um, that's my website. There's a contact page. It is the website for my original podcast, but all of my emails get filtered through there. Um, also on there, you can find my social media links for Facebook and Google Plus and Twitter and LinkedIn. Everything's on there. So yeah, you can find links to my books. Everything goes through that website. If you want to listen to the Dating Pool podcast, which actually runs three days a week, um, you can find the links to that on the datingpoolpodcast.com and you'll see the iTunes link and the Mixcloud link and all that good stuff. Excellent. I'm all over I'm all over the place. I don't even know how I sleep at night. <laughs> oh, well, I you sleep naked at night. I do. <laughs> Every, everything except for my necklace. My necklace I never take off. Yeah, I, I kind of keep my jewelry on lately yeah. too. Just just just, just the one. Just the one I keep on. That's it. <laughs> So really quickly, um, since we, we touched based on uh, dead bed syndrome, well, mm -hmm. how do you feel about toys in the bedroom? I mean, I personally think they're amazing. Oh, I, I love toys in the bedroom. I think it, I mean, I do love just being natural uh, with somebody without toys, but at the same time, you, you do need that extra excitement. It, and it's playful. It's fun. Sex is supposed to be fun. It's not supposed to be boring it's not supposed to be one person laying there the other person you know doing their stuff and you call it a day like it's meant to be an energy release it's meant to be exercise it's meant to be um laughable and um you know wrestleable i'm gonna say it's uh i i do like that i think that a lot of people when they do first get together and they first start dating each other or even if it's a you know even a couple of months that they're dating, they're so used to just being hopefully animalistic and raw. I would hope, I hope it's not boring sex at the beginning. If it is find a new partner, seriously. But you know, at that point, I, uh, you know, while you're doing that, you might as well start introducing that early because mm -hmm. if you are in a long-term relationship with this person, it's five years later and things are getting boring. It's very hard to have that conversation to now, later on introduce it. I think people at that point bring up other insecurities, like why do we need this now? You know, mm -hmm. so I think if you if you are dating somebody and you kind of start off introducing those types of things, I think it makes it easier and I think it's a little bit more long lasting than than others. Absolutely. So toys are a plus. Toys are a huge plus. Yeah. So we have a, a couple of comments here. Um, so let, let me go back to them. <laughs> um all right sylvia is like thanks jess uh santos again he says he doesn't get menopausal yeah because he creates it um <laughs> i like santos santos is a pain in the butt he's love my yeah, man <laughs> um keisha says this is awesome love it thank you keisha sylvia you, keisha. says love it um keisha says you sleep well because you love what you do mm -hmm. That she's talking about you. You sleep yeah, well. I um, do. Yes, and Dillis, she's like naked and toys all up in the bedroom, <laughs> vibrate. So, oh, Keisha says she's never used a toy. Oh, and Keisha, you, Keisha you, you have not lived. You have not lived. Is, is Keisha, can I ask Keisha a question? Keisha, are yes. you are you in a relationship or are you single? Can, no, can Keisha we, is actually married. So we she's we married. Need to, yeah, I need to like inbox her on the slide and um talk oh, with her. So, absolutely, because because either with or without toys, but toys are always good for this too. But but I you know I always say I wake up with the three M's: music, meditation, and masturbation. That's right. And whether absolutely. you're with a partner or not, it's still it, it's like a jolt to your day. Mm hmm. Keisha just wrote that she's married 20 years. Yes, Keisha, we're definitely going to talk. I'm going <laughs> to tell you that the, um, bringing toys into the bedroom is so amazing. And yes, Sylvia, you got the bullet. Girl, happy coming. Happy there you coming. go. Mm -hmm. um, and Dillis <laughs> is like, yes, masturbation. Yes. Dillis, you are a nut. That's why we <laughs> love you. <laughs> oh, she is too funny. She said, yes, I like that. Three M's. That's right. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, Sylvia. 
Um, but yeah, no, I, I mean, toys, toys are my favorite thing. Mm -hmm. you know? um, I don't like to over, I don't like to overuse. I don't want it to be the total facet of the bedroom. Oh, absolutely um, not. But, no. once in a while, but I do, I do some crazy shit. That, <laughs> that's all I know. I, I, oh. yeah. Well, okay. So we're talking about crazy shit. What is the craziest shit you ever done? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't even, I don't even think I should talk about that, but, uh, <laughs> I think I still have scars from it though. <laughs> All right, so where's the craziest place you ever had sex? Oh, wow. Um, let's see. Uh, on, and, and I, was, I was younger then. I was probably in my mid-20s, early 20s. Um, I don't think this is the craziest place. It's definitely not the craziest place. But I'm, I am a big outdoor sex type of person. And uh, so we were uh, on a patio outside of a restaurant slash bar. And, uh, and there were people out there, you know, but we, we hit it well. Ooh. Yeah. So, I, I mean, this started when I was young. So I've, I've always been kind of my outdoor steps. You know, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. The neighbors were home. I don't know. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of not that I want people watching, but there's mm -hmm. something about for me personally, there's something about being outside, like whether it's, you know, in the rain and you're getting dirty or so it, it's just, I don't know. Again, it goes back to that, like rawness, that animalistic type of tendency for me. Mm -hmm. Nice. So Evelyn just joined us. She says, sorry, honey, hey, my Evelyn. daughter got a job out in Nevada. It's fine, Evelyn, as long as you're here with us. That's all that counts, babe. We appreciate you coming in. Um, Keisha is saying that foreplay does her good and she also loves um, mother nature. Oh, yes. And, and foreplay is really important. And I think, um, do you have a lot of guys? I mean, I know Santos is on here, of course, mm -hmm. but for, for all the guys out there, you know, your climax happens like anywhere from like 30 seconds to a minute most of the time. And scientifically, it takes women 14 on average, about 13 or 14 minutes to get to that point. So you better be really good with foreplay. Absolutely. Foreplay is essential because um, there's a saying, right? You got to lick it before you stick it. That's right. And it's a, yeah. I'm surprised that a lot of a lot of guys don't do that. I mean, that's why. I think that's why straight women like me. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, ooh. <laughs> that's, that's my job. <laughs> uh, <laughs> love it. Um, no, yeah, I think that, you know, they get lazy. Mm -hmm. Men get lazy um, when it comes to the foreplay. I'll tell you something, though. There are some women that do also. Yes. And, and with, I mean, I have, I have a friend that um, had gone out with somebody and the two of them and she went out with another woman and the two of them I guess ended up at at her house and the girl didn't even do anything she just like laid there and expected you know the other person to do all the work and then that was it and then it was over and she's like oh I'm not going out with you again I I said I would have stopped right before that even happened I would have left yeah no mm -hmm. you gotta be engaging like listen Sex without head is super disrespectful. Mm -hmm. Okay, that goes for men and women, right? Men, men are big on, oh, I want a blowjob, I want a blowjob. Okay, what do you think we want? <laughs> like, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, if I'm given, I want to receive. Absolutely. You know, I think that it's a two way. Street. And when you and when when you give to somebody, I mean, that's that's a turn on. So. You know, and it's a turn on for the other person. So, so for guys out there, you have to remember if if you're if you're engaging her and you're turning her on, that's just going to make you later on seem like a real fucking man, right there. Mm -hmm. You know, 
Absolutely. Absolutely. It's Sylvia's like your next t-shirt, Monica. Talking about t-shirts. Yes, guys. Let's give a big shout out to Taino Inc. for creating the Happy Cummings t-shirt. We yes. have some still available, so make sure you definitely, um, you know, order those. Get your size in. And uh, we got them in pink, white, and black. Sorry about that, Jess. I had to plug that right quick. I now, I'm, I'm going to have to get myself a shirt, you know. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't um, put that out there because I was so frustrated because, you know, YouTube always gives us the issue. So whatever. It's all good. Yes, <laughs> Dillis, happy coming. He always gives many, many times before he receives. That's the rule. Yeah. That, that's um, a good, that's a good rule. That's a good rule, Evelyn. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Teresa says no fruit, Jess. No fruit. What? I mean, maybe bring fruit into the bedroom. Oh God, fruit. yeah, food, Absolutely. fruit. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's nothing. Bring ice. Yeah. Oh, definitely whipped cream, whipped cream mm -hmm. hot candle wax. Nothing is really off limits in in my bedroom. Mm. So I'll say it like that. Nothing's really off limits. There are certain things that I don't particularly like having done to me, but I have no problem you know, making sure that if, if the person who's in there with me wants certain things that I, I will make sure that I oblige because you want to make sure somebody's happy. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you know, it's still fun it's not for to me say too. that there should be boundaries, but I mean, like, yeah, there's to a certain degree because certain people don't want to explore certain things, you know, right, of course. And they're just really uncomfortable with it. But mm -hmm. you know, it, if they're, uh, Teresa says, dirty minds, and she loves your bear. Laugh out loud in your bear. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yes. I, um, you know what, though? I, my friends actually have made fun of me because when, you know, I have a group of friends and we take uh, trips together mm -hmm. and every once in a while. And and people have made fun of me because I actually have, like, a, a bag packed that's constantly in the trunk of my car. And because you never know what's going to happen. You never know what somebody's going to like. So I always make sure I have a stash of, of special things for, oh. for those occasions. Look at I'm that. I'm making myself sound like a whore, but I'm really not. You know. <laughs> but I enjoy sex, and you never know what's going to happen. Absolutely. Um, Santos, right? She's She comes first is the rule several times. Okay. <laughs> Good for you, and I need to know all of that because that's TMI because you're my brother, girls. <laughs> um, so yeah, all right, Santos, you could stop commenting because you're 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 just putting me in a place I don't want to be right now. <laughs> so, Actually, yeah. he was he was wrong on that last comment. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, Evelyn says discussions are important, and so are safe words. So mm -hmm. safe words, safe words are good. Like what, what kind of safe words, Evelyn? Pineapple? Like <laughs> what kind of safe words are we using? Hey, I, I need to know some, like, I, I don't know that I have a safe word. I, I don't think I have one. I don't have one. I don't have one either. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, yeah, I'm like, I don't have a safe word. I don't, I don't, I don't have one. Yeah. Hey, Evelyn, I need to know what kind of safe word are we talking? Oh, guys, wait one second. My son is calling. Hold on. Let me just see where he's at. Hello? Okay. Hold on. Excuse me. One second, guys. Jess, can you just tell everyone where they can find you again, pretty please? Sure, absolutely. Everybody can find me on dwjphl.com. That's the website for the Drinks with Jess podcast. On there, you'll find links to both of my books. Uh, you'll find all of my social media links there. And also, uh, you can go to the datingpoolpodcast.com. And again, you'll you'll see links to all of me. So you can contact me wherever, whenever. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Well, thank you. These um, Evelyn is saying about her safe word, it depends on what's happening. I still want to know your safe word. <laughs> I want to know <laughs> what you use. Just give me an example. Um, Santos writes, Trump is a safe word. Are you crazy? Don't even bring that man in my discussion. Dylan <laughs> um, says there are no safe words. Pineapple. That's right, Dylan. <laughs> Pineapple. What else? I'm sorry, 
Yes. No, that's okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna chat with your audience since you're, Hi, you're, I'm you're back. Away. and she's she just slides right on in there. I was just gonna overtake the whole show. Good, good, good. Just give them some more good info. Oh, I have a lot of good info, but they'll have to contact me for that. A lot of that can't be spread outside the uh, the listening zone. <laughs> Santos, Trump is to stop, get away word. <laughs> That's a red flag word. If if someone's using that in the bedroom, run. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That, yeah, that would, I, if I had to choose a safe word, that would probably be it. <laughs> yeah, right? Mm -hmm. um, I don't have a safe word. I don't know that I would use a safe word. I would just be like, wait, hold up, stop. <laughs> You yeah, know? I don't. I, I don't think I've ever had. I don't think I've ever had an experience that I needed anybody to stop. And I, I, I can, you know, I can sustain a lot. So, uh, yeah. So I've never had to have. I'm trying to think of any any of the women that I've been with had safe words. I'm sure they did, but uh, you know, I think I I knew them enough and I knew their minds enough to know where their boundary was before. I had to worry about it, mm -hmm. you know, I, it, it, something, something that, you know, I, I'm very fortunate with is that because I know my body mechanics, I know somebody else's body mechanics because I'm, you know, I date women. So it's, it's not that much different, but when you pay attention to, to their breathing, to their body movements, to their voice, to all these other things, it, if you have that, that really keen attention, you actually know when you're hitting that boundary, mm -hmm. you know, but that, I mean, that takes, that takes a lot of time and a lot of practice. It does. Mm -hmm. um, Teresa is um, saying, well, that's for contract BDSM, like safe mm -hmm. words are for those usually for that stuff. Not necessarily, not mm -hmm. necessarily. You know, there are, there are people out there who, again, if, if they're not comfortable with their bodies or like, I remember dating, dating a woman who, um, who stopped me at first because the lights were still on, which I don't know why. I mean, she was beautiful, but she, she, she was insecure. I have no idea why, but she was insecure about her body. So like before anything got any further, she stopped me to make sure that I would turn the lights off or wow. blow the candle, and, which is totally fine because sometimes it's kind of nice to not be able to see anything, you know, right. like, it, it's, it's kind of exotic, way, but at the same time, like that was, that was her thing. So, Sometimes people are just going to tell you to stop when they tell you to stop. You know, if you're if you're touching them too hard, if you're biting them too hard, whatever the case may be, at, at this point, people are going to tell you to stop. Now, safe words, yeah, BDSM, that it, they're they're definitely within a contract ne necessarily have to be safe words. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, we people were saying, well, lights on or off. I mean, I like both. It doesn't matter mm -hmm. to me. I like looking into my partner's eyes. Mm -hmm. um, well, surprisingly, you know, most most women, and and again, it's a body thing. Most and, and women go by by touch. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of things that they do, they they do because of something that they feel. So women are more apt to have sex with the lights off, where men are visual. So for men. It, they need to see things to be aroused mm -hmm. where women go into their minds. Right. So the, I, I think I read a study. I think it said like, like 75 to 80% of women would rather have sex with the lights off. Yeah, I like the I lights actually, on. I actually, um, I actually put up um, a sex um, stat on that too. And mm -hmm. I think it was 70% of the women would prefer, prefer the lights to be off. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, yeah, if they're suffering from an insecurity and, you know, cause sometimes what happens is that women have babies and we have like this pouch that stays. So they get a little insecure about that. Mm -hmm. I get it. It's stretch marks. I get it. And, and younger women are like that too. Mm -hmm. For some reason, younger, younger women, I, I think because they're still in that mindset of, I have to look like this. And since I don't, no matter what yeah. I do, they haven't gotten to that. I think once you hit a certain age, you're kind of over that body image thing for, for the most part. For the but, most part. Well, yeah. I, don't, I don't know because today- Then we just have to worry about aging. Yeah. <laughs> then you got to just do a lot of different things. Anti-aging creams, like, uh, yeah. I mean, 
are we ever really satisfied? That's the question, right? <laughs> are we really ever satisfied with what we look like, you know, or whatever? I, I don't think so. But I'm, I'm that's why they need you. That's why they need you. That's why they need you, though. Yes, so that you can remind them that they're, you know, beautiful. Absolutely. I mean, you know, seriously, attraction really has nothing to do with looks. Mm -mm. And it doesn't have to do with your body type. It, it really, I mean, you could have the most beautiful person staying in front of you, but if they're not displaying that through their confidence and their body language, it, it means shit. It doesn't Basically. mean anything. Yeah. I totally agree. I totally agree. So I'm sitting here um, because I, I was, I told you I came from the gym and I had to mm -hmm. rush home to cook dinner and stuff and I'm eating my dinner. <laughs> so yeah, I was I was gaining like weight because of the menopause and I was kind of feeling some type of way about it because I was feeling heavy. So I've definitely slimmed down and I'm feeling like a lot more confident. Mm -hmm. So, you know, cause now I'm getting more comfortable back in, you know, into the shape. I mean, I'm never gonna be the same size I was pre-baby. Hey, that's okay. Yeah. But you know, um, you have to own it. You know, it, when you when you own yourself and you own your body and you're happy with with the person that you are, that, that's confidence right there. Like you don't mm -hmm. even have to worry about it. And I mean, like I'm getting older. I'm I'm going salt and pepper. My hair used to be dark brown, and now I'm all gray. You know, I'm starting to get crow's feet, and it, it is what it is. You know, we're mm -hmm. all going to do that as we get older. So you better love every other aspect of yourself because those looks are going to fade and you Absolutely. can work out and, and you can look great. And, and working out is better because it, not because it makes you look good, but because mm -hmm. it, it gives you more energy. It gives you stamina. You'll be able to keep up and do more interesting things. And you know what? You'll be a lot younger than what your age says you are. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like I'm just feeling crazy amazing um i used to work out all the time and mm -hmm. dance and dance class and stuff like that so like just being able to get back into it, it it's super amazing my poor mm -hmm. husband because you know i'm like hey 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 <laughs> i'm here you know right. kind of thing but um let's see we got more comments for you uh, let's see. Evelyn says she's going to be 51 on the 17th. So happy birthday, Evelyn. It's coming happy up. Mm -hmm. Um, Dillis is saying I'm fucking sexy. Of course um, she's saying that. Dillis, we love you. <laughs> yes. Evelyn says I am beautiful and hot. Yeah. Sylvia, Sylvia says at 35, I woke up loving my body. That's it. And Keisha it said, yeah, I, I go through that. I guess, you know, the back and forth on the, mm -hmm. you know, feeling attractive and weight, I guess. Mm -hmm. And then Santos, of course, because he's just super active on this post. Confidence in a woman is totally attractive. Mm -hmm. and Dillis is saying, own it. Yes. Keisha says, Jess, you hit it on the money. <laughs> Evelyn, Thanks, on point. Thank you, girl. And then Keisha said, it's who you are on the inside and how you make others feel about themselves. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, well, I, I just looked at the time. No menopause. I go through that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> menopause. Oh, okay. Got you. Yeah. Yeah. Menopause sucks. I I, I, I'm not there yet. You're not there yet? You're lucky. No, no. I mean, I, I'm only 40. I'm assuming in the next couple of years, maybe, but not, mm -hmm. I'm still going strong. Yeah, no, I got it. I actually got it pretty young, so whatever. Mm -hmm. It happens. Mm -hmm. But it can't stop things. That's oh, I don't let it stop things. I know Absolutely. you don't. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to stop nothing. No, I'm going to be, like I said, I don't care if I'm shriveled up, 90 years old, I better die of an orgasm heart attack. There you go. That's, that, that's the best way to go. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> But I'm looking at the time. So Jess, if you don't mind, we're gonna go ahead and bring this um, you know, broadcast to a close. Absolutely. If you could just tell everyone where they can reach you one more time, pretty please. Yes, ma'am, my pleasure. You can reach me at dwjphl.com. Uh, all my social media links will be there. That is the 
uh, website to my show, The Drinks With Jess podcast, which you can find on Mixcloud and iTunes. Um, if you don't want to go there, if you want more dating uh, advice, you can always go to the datingpoolpodcast.com. That is my new show. And you can find all the links there as well for social media, iTunes, Mixcloud, all the recordings. That show goes three days a week. All my books are listed everywhere. And I'm sure you will probably see me all over Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And we appreciate you um, coming on and, you know, taking the time and chatting. And letting I know you're going you're gonna to have to join me again on mine. I Absolutely. love having you on. I love having you on, too. So, like, we should make this, like, once a month <laughs> where hey, we just we just link up and, you know, you come back on. The, the women are loving you. So that's my job. Hi, ladies. <laughs> See, look what happens when you get a lesbian on the air. Wag there that you put in. That's my job, ladies. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. I love it. It's been super great having you. And I, I, I can't wait to the day that we actually really meet. Like, yeah, well, I'll be, you. I'll be coming up to, uh, New York. I think maybe the first week of August, I have a, a couple of, of people I have to meet with and, and interview for the show. Maybe I can hook up with you and we could do a live one too. That would be great. You can come here to the house and we can do it live from the house. Whatever that you would want. Be totally awesome. And we, I could cook cause there I cook. You, I know how to cook. I love food. Yeah, see, it yeah. works. So you can I'll, come I'll help you us. cook. How about that? You just give me a job and I'll do it. No, I got the kitchen. I don't like no one in my kitchen. All right, fine with me then. <laughs> I'll, listen, I'll, I'll, the I'll make the drinks. How about that? Okay, you do the drinks and I'll, I'll make you an amazing Spanish dish. Oh, a Puerto I love Rican that. dish. Well, you know what? That just means you're going to have to dance with me when I'm there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. That's it. A little bit of salsa. We're all good. But we'll do whatever. We'll have a great time, and people, you'll have this here. And actually, Santos, if you're still on, we we need to do another live one too because the women love him too. So this yes. would be. You know what? Maybe I'll invite my brother the day that you come, and then oh we'll, my God. Oh, we'll have like a big party here. And Dillis, you can come up too. So <laughs> that would be fun. Great. Yeah, it'll be a lot of fun. So, guys. Thank you for joining me tonight as well. I really appreciate it. And yes, I threw a tantrum, so I apologize for that. Um, but yeah, it's frustrating with between YouTube and Facebook Live to get this stuff situated. And mm-hmm. I was having one of those mental breakdowns today because I just, sometimes I can't take it. But Jess, thank you, thank you. Oh, thank you for having me on, Monica, I love you. I love you too. Everyone, make sure you visit Jess and, you know, she's the pre-workout. So definitely get with her if you're in this dating scene and you need a little more confidence and you need to work with someone to help you, you know, assess what what's going on and, you know, what areas you can fix. That's Jess. Visit yeah, that's her. Nice. She's the pre-workout. And then once you start working out and you get bored with your workout, then you come visit me at tantalizingproductions.com, monicasmartinez.com. So thank you again, guys. Have a wonderful, wonderful night. Get sex wasted. Happy comings. <laughs> and vessels. Good night, guys. Thank you, Jess. Bye. Thanks, Monica. Good night, everyone.